Mysteries, Post Office Box 1. You can deadbolt your doors, you can lock your windows and activate your alarms, but you still may not be safe. At least not from a new breed of high-tech criminal that can invade your home and every aspect of your life through modems and phone lines. We call them cyberstalkers. They strike from the shadows of the information superhighway. With a few keystrokes they're in, and make no mistake, they can wreak as much havoc as a criminal who physically breaks and enters. Yet most states haven't even passed legislation banning their activities. Tonight, two cases from the lawless frontier of cyberspace. Cynthia Armistead is a respected technical writer from Atlanta, Georgia. A stalker apparently singled her out in a news group, an internet meeting place where people talk via computer postings. Cynthia says the unseen antagonist posted an ad across the internet, inviting strangers to contact Cynthia if they wanted a prostitute. Then a day or so later, I started getting hundreds of email from strange men wanting to set up dates or to know prices for special services. Cynthia fought back. Using her own computer skills, she says she traced the lurid ads to a man named Richard Hilliard. He lived nearby, and Cynthia claims that he sent threatening email, both to her and her five-year-old daughter, Katie. The obscenity sent to Katie, I'm just not even going to repeat. The, when he said that he'd followed us home, he said, we're going to have a lot of fun now, bitch. Watch your back. Let's get it on. Cynthia no longer felt safe in her own home. She alerted police to the threats and took other steps to protect herself. I fear him as a deranged, obsessed individual. We've moved several times. We've changed our phone number. I learned to use a gun. I have a permit to carry a concealed weapon. I'm worried about my daughter's safety. She asks questions, and all I can leave it at is that for whatever reason, there are crazy bad people in this world. And we don't do anything to deserve it. We didn't do anything to encourage it. But we have to protect ourselves against them. Richard Hilliard was eventually arrested on stalking and harassment charges stemming from this case. His trial is scheduled to begin this month. However, experts say such prosecutions are the exception. One of the problems with, with stalking online is that there is almost no case law. Attorneys are afraid of it because they don't know if they can win. It's, it's Colin Hatcher is the co-founder of Cyber Angels, one of the few groups that fights Internet abusers on their own turf. Cyber Angels has had its share of run-ins with high-tech stalkers. In our experience, in every single cyber stalking case we've dealt with, the cyber stalker attempts to locate the physical address of the woman he's stalking. Cyberstalking involves a prolonged, malicious vendetta, premeditated, planned, systematic. The person doing it is obsessed with you. They wish to hurt you. We have to take into account the possibility that they wish to escalate the situation to real life and to physically assault their target. If I could face these people, I would ask them, why did you pick me? Why are, why are you so obsessive with me that you continue to harass me? Jane Hitchcock says that beginning in January of 1996, she and a group of fellow writers posted notices like this one on the internet. It warned that a certain literary agency aggressively soliciting business might be a fraud. The agency denies any wrongdoing or unethical practices. Hitchcock says that soon after issuing the warning, she found herself in the line of fire. She claims it began with an onslaught of messages to her email address. The sheer volume blew out the system. Hitchcock says that the cyber harassment included an attempt to get her fired from her job at the University of Maryland by sending insulting letters in her name to co-workers and employers. And that was just for starters. I got a call from a woman in California, and she said, your name's in all the sex-related news groups. And I was like, what? And I just went right to my computer, 
And I turned it on, got on, and I found out that there were these messages called Hot for Love Bites. And the basic message was that I was interested in sadomasochistic sex. So here was my home phone number, my home address, all over the internet. When the calls did come, I was thinking, well, if these people are going to call, then what's to stop somebody from coming to the door? A million strangers could now find Jane's home address with a touch of a computer key. When she's home alone, she keeps a handgun close by. I called the police. They said they couldn't do anything because they weren't really good with computers and didn't know anything about the internet. They could send a guy over, you know, and take a report, and I said, well, that's not going to help me if they're not going to understand what I'm talking about. Despite countless hours of research, Jane Hitchcock has not been able to identify all those she believes are involved in stalking her. However, she has filed a civil lawsuit against the agency, alleging harassment, libel, and infliction of intentional emotional distress. In a letter to Unsolved Mysteries, the agency reiterated its innocence and insisted it has never waged any vendetta against Jane Hitchcock. Whether it's defamation or malicious harassment or terrorizing somebody, these problems should not be trivialized just because they're being um, piloted and targeted through a keyboard and a monitor. Stalking is a very precise crime. Cyberstalking is the same. The intent is just as vicious and the effect is just as devastating as any physical threat. There is no sure way to avoid a cyberstalker, but a few guidelines can help. Never post your home address, phone number, credit card numbers, or social security number. Use a gender-neutral screen name, and do not assume you know the true character of someone you have met in cyberspace. If you have any information about the case's profile tonight, please call our toll-free number, 1-800-876-5353.